Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is process validation. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explain, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video you've seen, please go back and check out the introduction. Look at the video description for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we will cover. We have a standard agenda for these videos, which covers four main areas. You can see those in the progress bar. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our requirement, process validation, comes directly from 820.75 and 1345 section 7.5.6. Process validation in five words. Process, qualifications, guarantee, conforming product. When it comes to process validation, we have to decide which processes we will validate and which ones we will not. And that decision comes down to whether we're going to do 100% inspection or whether we are not going to do 100% inspection. If we 100% inspect all product attributes, we do not have to validate the process. If we're going to do any sort of sampling, then we have to validate. There are some processes and some test methods which you cannot just by definition do 100% inspection. And that's any sort of test which would require destructive testing. Once we've decided to validate, a process validation consists of three separate qualifications. They are commonly referred to as IQ, OQ, and PQ. Installation qualification, operational qualification, and performance qualification. I will do separate videos on each one of those qualifications. A successful validation is all three, IQ, OQ, PQ, completed and signed off. Once we've done the validation, we have to implement procedures for monitoring and controlling our process parameters as they are defined in the validation. And then we have to have change control. So if we make changes, we revalidate where we need to. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, all of the processes that I have that require validation, they are validated. Second, I have a master validation plan or a list of all processes and equipment and software within my facility, and it defines what it is and its validated status. If it's not validated, it is a schedule. It will tell you when it will be validated. Third, if I make changes to validated processes, I'm doing the revalidation work necessary to ensure that that process maintains in a validated state. Finally, I handle all deviations within my validation protocols. I assess their impact on the actual validation itself, and then I take appropriate action based on the risk the deviation presents. How do I know it's not working? Well, first, I have processes, I have software, I have test equipment, test methods, they're not validated. They need to be, and they're not. I'm doing some verification, but the processes should be validated. Second, deviations during my validations, they're not addressed. Third, I'm not doing a prospective validation. So I'm doing a concurrent or a retrospective type validation. And then finally, I make changes and I don't do the revalidation activity that I need to do. Now for those three bonus questions. First, can I see our master validation plan? Second, how do we handle and investigate deviations as they occur within our process validations? And then finally, can you walk me through how I would validate a new piece of equipment? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.